What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, joined at the left toe this time by the one, the only... Gersh One. And today we're back at it to answer more questions in another enticing episode of For the Greater... <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. And if you enjoy our channel and you want to support the channel, uh, you can do that by giving us a super thanks. If you do, ask us a question and we will answer it in the next episode. Guaranteed, you would lead the next greater walk. Which is what Time and... No. Tease Family Kent has done. If it's If it turns out that a missing Primarch is a female, how would the how would that change your view of the game of 40k? So that's actually my headcanon for the, one of the missing Primarchs, and uh, I'll give you guys the lore on that pretty soon. Um, I also started it, but I changed some stuff. But anyway, yeah, so in my opinion, I think that kind of goes against what we know from 40k, because the Emperor mixed his genes with that of Erda the Perpetual to create 20 Primarchs. These Primarchs technically should be all male because at the end of the day that's where their gene seed comes from and gene seed is only compatible with the male genome to create space marines so if there is a female that kind of goes against that and in, throughout the various sprinkles of lore on the missing primarchs we know that they both had factions of space marines so it's not like oh this primarch didn't have a legion no they did and we know that at some point in time the primarch met with the Emperor, was included in there, fought during the Great Crusade, and then that's when the tragedy struck and they were either purged, probably by the Rangdang um, genocide. But again, we don't know exactly what happened there. But if it is a female, um, it'd be pretty interesting to see, maybe Erda had more of her genetics or more of her um, psycho alchemies put into this creation. Maybe since it is a female, there's more into it about blanks or maybe the pariah gene or something like that. So I feel like that opens up a whole new avenue to explore in the timeline of 40k that we haven't gotten yet. But if we do get to that, it would definitely be very interesting and it won't change my opinion at all. If anything, I'd be more interested to read and find out the uh, intricacies between that Primark. For sure, yeah. I think like what would I know what would happen is uh, if we got a female Primark, the I was gonna say the viewers, but no, like the demographic of 40k usually tends to be male, and they're super against a concept like yeah, that. Yeah, they are very out in pitchforks and mm -hmm. you know, kind of like, oh, this is how it's supposed to be, only men, stuff like that. You want female space marines? You have the sisters of battle. Yeah, and it could just be a loud minority, but they're loud, so they're yes. gonna. It's it's gonna be annoying for the entire like, I guess initial phase of introducing a female Primarch. Um, the other thing that I would feel is if there is a female pr uh, Primarch, it's one of those things where it's almost as if, is as if Sanguinius were to come back. Mm -hmm. It defeats the purpose of what the lore had established in the past, of like, well, he died, and he died for a reason. So bringing back Sanguinius would suck. So like, if there was a female Primarch, I feel like it would it would be like, well, how does that make any sense if, like you said, there were legions of space marines, so then what happened to all these female legions, mm -hmm. or female space marines? I mean, it could be that they still created a male space marine with, oh, just female with the gene yeah. seed, and it didn't really do it. Or maybe that's why they got purged, because they were creating it off of a female Primarch, and that led to like, gene seed and perfections or like yeah. mutations and stuff like that and I, what i feel about that is that it usually or what it gives me the vibe of is like it's really good to create a monolith of one character like to really bolster this female character and it's kind of going against what gw has done with the lore in the past which is kind of like make it a sandbox world where you can you can kind of like add your own twist because there's so many chapters because mm -hmm. there's so many um factions within like whatever it is whereas like now it's like no now you get one single model um and and it's 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 almost like storytelling as opposed to letting you fill in the blank does that make sense i feel like 40k has always been like a mad lib type of environment mm -hmm. for me and I love that. Like, I think that's what makes it so amazing. It's not like Star Wars where you have, like, you have Luke, Leia, but, like, you have named characters. You you can create your own characters in 40K. Whereas if um, you give one individual female character who still has space marines that, are, that have the gene seed of this female, it still makes this... 
it creates this like sense of like it's more storytelling. It feels more Star Wars ish than 40k. Yeah, if that makes sense. Right. Um, yeah. But with that being said, be sure to subscribe because I will be posting this video hopefully this weekend, so you guys can give me my thoughts. See if this explanation as to how there could be a female space or a female Primarch with still male Space Marines makes sense because I'm going to tie it all in with uh, the Legion of the Damned. Mm. So okay. let me know what you guys think of that. Subscribe. Uh, next question comes from the big one. Why are people always telling me to use head and shoulders or head and shoulders to get rid of dandruff? What if I like my dandruff? It's like whatever I it's where it's like whenever I go, it's always snowing. Sometimes people don't like to have other people's dandruff on their food, mm -hmm. on their clothes, on their person. So you got to be mindful of that because I mean the wind likes to blow and it'll blow that dandruff wherever. Uh, head and shoulders is really good also for getting rid of hives. <laughs> so if you ever have an allergic reaction, like if you get stung by a bee. I got stung by a wasp the other day. Wasps don't die when they get st when they stung, right? I killed it. <laughs> uh, that that wasp stinger was like in my ear really uh, deep. And you could, you could tell that my ear is still red and it's sticking out. So Ouch. It, that happened three days ago. Next question. Oh, this one's by Brian BBBBB. How orky are you right now? Well, I mean, technically, you've fought a Tyranid and survived. That's very orky of you. Yeah, Tyranids are ba or wasps are basically Tyranid bioforms mm -hmm. that were left here by the hive fleet. And they're an invasive species like Tyranids. Wasps aren't invasive species, are they? I thought they were. No, invasive species would be like uh, iguanas in Florida. <laughs> uh, I don't think in the Midwest we're worried about wasps. Wasps are worried about you. Yeah, I <laughs> killed it. St uh, sting me again. Yeah. Next question. Uh, so this goes back to the whole, why are there not any Japanese space marines? They said, um, Tau are super Japanese. Even their names derive from Japanese mythologies and stuff like that. Yep. Um, yes and no. So the thing about Tau is, so you, you get all these namings, all these, uh, like the devil fish, the manta ray. There's a lot of aquatic animals and aquatic themes put onto them. And then once you look into their culture, you have like the samurai-esque Tao um, and stuff like that. But all of that, it, all the names and everything we see like that derive from what the Imperium are calling the Tao. So like the devilfish, that's what humans have put on this devilfish. That's not what the Tao call it. Like they have their own words, their own... Um, language and stuff like that. Lexicanum so that's just the yeah, lexicanum. Yeah. So that's just the Imperium's representation of what they see. Yeah. So it's really the Imperium humanity that is attaching aquaticness and Japanese. Well, kind of, because yeah. it is a cult, the culture yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. So yes and no, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but definitely look at Farsight and his eight. That is totally a ripoff of like the seven samurai trope and stuff like that so. which is really cool it is and it, it adds for like um well that's another example of gw um creating like narrowing the creativity of a person because mm -hmm. if you play farsight enclaves like you know what you are yeah. like there you're not building your own thing mm -hmm. so it's interesting um next question if space or this one's by Mitchell Johnson. If space marines are predominantly fighting Tyranids on planets, then could they just live on warships until the fight is over? Yeah. So just so space marines don't have fortress monasteries on planets. Um, some do, but a lot of them are also space-faring chapters. So they have a fortress monastery on like a, a ship. Yeah. And there's very little space marines. There's usually only a thousand. So like if there's a battle, it's usually just a company, which is a hundred, mm -hmm. and they're not sending. Usually they're not sending the full company. Right. Yeah. Anytime you see these like grand battles, it's definitely like a first founding chapter going to war and they're calling on their successors for aid. Yeah. So that's why you have like, oh, there's a crap ton of space marines fighting against a crap ton of chaos marines or whatever. Yeah, because it's a whole conglomerate. And space marines are like, you know, they're... They're, they're what's known when you come to 40k, but if you're a regular human living in the 40k universe, space marines are like a myth to you. Yep. That's like us saying, oh, there's like Valkyries fighting. We're never going to see a Valkyrie. 
and that's how it kind of is for humanity and space marines yeah and remember they're elite so the missions that they go on are very like tailored towards something specific Mm -hmm. uh they're not um your regular rank and file soldier those that's the imperial guard right right. so uh so for example with space marine the game um they were sent there specifically to like get certain missions done missions that like regular humans couldn't do yeah yeah so you don't really see them as much but since they're like GW's baby, you see them everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next question. This one is by Kellett781. I would say that the only chapter of Marines that even comes slightly close to the Asian culture would be that of Jack Dai Khan and his guys. They're Mongolian. Yeah, it's more about like horses and stuff like that, speed, uh, cavalry. Genghis Khan. Yeah. That kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, And those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us, and we'll talk tomorrow. Yep. As always, this is the Sound Alchemist. Gersh One. And we are out.